Hi everyone, welcome. I'm down here in my wormery, and from time to time we come over to this side of the room just to look at a couple of the oddball stuff that I've got going on. A lot of these things that I've got going on over here, I don't even really keep very good notes on. I don't even track their progress or anything in my spreadsheet like I do with all the other systems back there on the shelf. Here we've got a couple of the um, containers holding the material that came out of my outdoor worm bag version 3.0. There's some large chunk material that got caught up in the screen, as well as everything that passed through the screen, all the nice castings. And we spent a little time working on this stuff the other day. At that time, we took a quick peek over here, too, and we spoke for a moment about this other collection of castings. These castings were the ones that came out of my outdoor compost barrel. Years worth of material. It's quite a bit... Um, it's not that heavy now that it's drying a little bit, but I have been moistening it regularly. Make sure it keeps damp. It's 56 days now since I started piling stuff into here. And the assumption has been all the while that it's full of cocoons. 56 days though, that's more than twice the amount of time needed for cocoons to hatch. So any cocoons that were in there are probably hatched by now. There's probably babies. And the babies are probably even not so small anymore. Who knows? So I think the time has come to start baiting them out. And this will actually be my first time actually probing through the material to see how it looks. Well, no, that's not true. I did probe into it a little bit the other day, and I did notice worms cruising around. So I'm going to get this thing up on the bench, put on a glove, and we're going to get a closer look. at. So over here on the side, you can see the stuff that I bought down from the kitchen. These are just shells to be pulverized. The rest of it is just broccoli on a piece of soiled paper towel. This is going to be what I'm using to set up uh, our little baiting station to see if we can attract the worms to come over to it. I thought I might even use a little bit of my prepared worm chow, just a pulverized collection of seeds and grains in here. So let's get this plastic covering off. I'm curious to see how things look in here. This is pretty much the only view I've been getting of this system when I come in here, because I'll just come in with my water bottle uncover it start pouring in the water for minutes I'll just pour the water in and it'll it'll get pretty damp sometimes I can even see a little puddle forming here but other than that I've not really had a chance to explore how things are progressing in here and the material does feel nice and damp it's a double bag you know you can see how I've got one fabric bag within the other which I believe provides a pretty decent amount of protection against evaporation oh I'm glad it does because I'm going down here and I could feel right away the material right up against the side of the bag is just very very slightly dry but really not bad at all I guess because I've also not only would I apply moisture right down to the middle I would go around the round and round kind of trying to keep the edges damp too so a little bit of a relief since I've not really gone to this extent to see how stuff looks in here. Now I did spot a worm or two earlier, but I didn't pause because I was more interested in the moisture level in here. But I believe what we can do, if nothing else, is also just bring in some of that drier stuff that we've already observed that we know is on the edges. Kind of bring that stuff in, give it a little opportunity to bit be closer to where the moisture is. The center of the bin is going to be a lot more damp, and I'm assuming that that's where we're going to see a greater number of worms. Although sometimes the worms do like to cruise into a slightly drier material. I'm really not seeing too many worms out here. And here again, there's just a number of assumptions stacked onto each other here. You know, the first assumption being that there was a bunch of cocoons in here, because I never really had much of an opportunity to look through it to see if I could find the cocoons. I was mainly just processing the material and you know trying to move stuff from point A to point, point B, make sure the worms were dealing with are all okay. So this will really be um, interesting. 56, 56 uh, days was when this began, but it was only the beginning. Only one third of this went in here 56 days ago. Over the course of another seven or 10 days, I don't remember, we emptied two other containers that were similar in size to the one that we emptied 56 days ago into here. And then I believe it was maybe, like I said, seven or 10 days later when we finally poured the last batch of sifted castings into here. And I was worried, you know, you could see we're pretty close to the rim. I didn't know if we we're gonna have room enough to fit it. And luckily it did fit in pretty nicely. 
So once again, I did see a couple worms here or there. The material down here in the center is definitely more damp. But I was expecting to see more worms. Hmm. That's okay. I'm sure they're in here, and I'm sure that if we lay out some food for them, we're going to see a number of them coming together. Just somehow, um, during like that one other time I probed into here not too long ago that I made reference to earlier, it, it did seem to me like as soon as I probed into the material, I was encountering worms. But here, I don't know. Maybe I'm just missing them. Maybe the on the camera, maybe there's more worms visible. Sometimes I also wonder if they're just very small and they're just not very mobile. Maybe I should just let stuff sit here for a moment after stirring it up to see if there's any movement that I could spot. Alright, so from where I'm standing, I only saw two things moving and they were tiny. Tiny, tiny little worm that I thought I had snagged over there. And then there's another one over here. And did I just knock them off? I thought I'd, <laughs> I don't know, I thought I was going to be able to pick them each up and get a close look at how big they are, but they were tiny. So I don't know how quickly worms grow from the size they are when they hatch to a, a size where they're, you know, not the size of an eyelash. <laughs> I, I would hope that there's still nourishment enough in this system for them to be able to nibble on for a good while. You know, also factoring in the um, the consideration that worms can actually re-eat their own castings over and over since so much nutritional value remains in this stuff after the first pass through that it can be eaten numerous times. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that all the castings in here are also to a certain degree potential food source for baby worms so let's see I me am I gonna be able to see another little bit of movement here certainly not what I was expecting but still not going to derail me from my plans to get this feeding zone established it also tells me that the, my waterings are you know pretty much where they need to be as far as the frequency and the amount because the material seems just right in terms of moisture level, you would think something that you've been, you know, dumping cups and cups of water into on a regular basis would be muddy and disgusting, but no, it's super flaky, as you can see everywhere, even dry in some places, so we blended it all together. But I think the time has come to lay out the bait station, get this thing covered up, and let it continue, and then, you know, at some point in the near future, we'll check back in, see how the broccoli did in terms of, you know, attracting worms to itself. Maybe we'll be able to uh, scoop some worms out of here before we get ready to use this stuff out in the garden. Spring is sprung, and I mean, the last frost date for my grow zone is still more than a month away. So I'm not going to be planting anything quite yet, but soon it'll be here before you know it, right? So let's see. Before we put the, um, the solid foods down in that little supplemental piece of paper bedding for them, I'm going to also introduce some of my shredded seeds and grains chow worm chow mixture whatever <laughs> kind of brand new to using it so this is only the second or third time i've actually used it as food in a somewhat routine situation and that's kind of what i had in mind in terms of the food just um i have one sort of good size collet where the all the structure is attached to one stem and all the rest of this stuff is just the loose stuff that came out of the bottom of the bag and some of the smaller collets. I took all the other larger chunks because this thing was a whole head. And I took all the larger chunks and put them back in the freezer and for this we um, were getting all of the smallest itsy bitsy tiny stuff for the little worms. And yeah, there's a piece of paper there. They're going to have to battle their way through the paper to get at it. But I don't think that it's going to be a battle. I think they're going to um, welcome the opportunity to nibble on a little bit of fresh carbon-based material, bedding-like type material, because this stuff is completely barren of any um, anything. <laughs> there's no no food in here. I don't. I mean, yeah. I mean, there's edible stuff, but like no uh, visible feedings of any sort. Certainly no bedding. 
I'm just going to assume that from a grit perspective, the system's got sufficient grit in it so that babies can pick up little chunks of residual eggshell that might be floating around in here and um, use it. Or would now be the time to put a little of that in here too. Maybe that wouldn't be a bad idea. Let me go grab my grit. Here we go. Just a little coating of crushed eggshell just in case anyone needs it. I think we're good to go. So, what do you think? How does this material look? To me it looks fantastic and it's so nice and crumbly even though it's nice and damp. It just seems to be ideal almost. So I'm sure my plants are going to appreciate it once it makes its way out into the garden in a very short period of time. But in the meantime we're going to see what we could do about maybe collecting up some baby worms out of here. Certainly wasn't an impressive show <laughs> in terms of what we saw today. And I really didn't know what to expect but whatever. Take the good with the bad, right? And keep your fingers crossed. Hopefully we'll end up with a bunch of baby worms here. So that's it for today, everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. Um, and if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.